Good morning or good afternoon everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. This is just a sound check for my benefit. Uh, so we shall see you in just under five minutes. Thanks. Good afternoon or good morning everybody. Welcome to today's webinar which is going to be with my very special guest Tina who I shall bring on screen uh, at the moment. Uh, so Tina's here today to talk about uh, her self-portrait workflow which she's been keeping herself uh, busy with over the past um, a few weeks. Um, before we get to that just a couple of uh, housekeeping notes. Uh, so we are broadcasting out uh, in our webinar room. So hello to those of you who are in the webinar room and also Facebook and YouTube. And in theory, we're also bro broadcasting to Tina's own Facebook group um, as well. So hopefully the technology keeps up. Um, if you do hear a fan blasting in the background, that's because first world problem, my air conditioning has broken down today. So if I'm looking a little bit hot and bothered, that's why. Um, so hopefully nothing overheats, uh, including myself and everything still runs for the next uh, 45 minutes or so. Uh, we do have uh, around 60 minutes maximum today, but I think with our little chat and workflow, it'd probably be around uh, 45. We are recording this as well. It will live on on uh, YouTube and Facebook immediately after it's finished, so you can always watch it there again. Um, and also, um, 
for the webinar recording. The, again, it'll just live on YouTube afterwards too. Uh, for those of you in the webinar room, if you want to ask a question, you can do so and try and keep it to the Q&A tab because that just keeps it separate from uh, the chat. And we've also got uh, Andre, who's um, uh, looking after some questions in our webinar room and other Phase 1, uh, sorry, Capture 1 team people looking out, out for us on social media as well. Now, if you want to hide the chat uh, in the webinar room, you can just click on that little arrow and that will give you a bit more screen real estate. So let us begin. So let's go and find uh, Tina. So Tina, you're on screen now. Amazing. Yeah. Hi. Good. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm sweaty. Yeah, it's the day of the year. How are you? Good. It's apart from being, uh, you know, what, what's the what's the mercury up to? Twenty nine at the moment. So that's nice and toasty. So yeah. hopefully everything keeps running and not uh, overheating. Um, OK, so um, what we're going to do today is is more of a workflow webinar that with a little bit of editing. but It was more about workflow, why you tried or started to do this and of course, you know, what was the benefit or what was the result um, at the end of it. So to get a bit of context, I'm just going to show your screen so we can see uh, your Capture One now, uh, Tina, as well. Um, so first of all, what was uh, the project? So the pictures that I have up right now was kind of the beginning of the whole thing. So Got it. Um, I was really, really inspired by a couple of friends of mine, um, namely Johnny and Brandy. <laughs> yeah, hello. Hello, if you're watching. <laughs> take, um, they're like the king and queen of, of self-portraits, so to say. And I've always admired it. I've always admired how they were expressing their own personality in an image. And I was sort of sitting there like, oh, I wish I could do that. Hmm. I wish I was photogenic. <laughs> <laughs> and so so I kind of like, obviously lockdown happened and I love that we will look back at this in two years time and we're gonna go, oh wow, 2020 was marvelous. 2020 marvel. was an interesting year, <laughs> definitely. Um, so with that, um, the beauty and portrait photographers will know that we are in a genre that just couldn't work with anyone. There was no way around Exactly, that. there was no no real way to do anything since early March, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, it still isn't. Yeah. If you are in the UK, um, there was another announcement yesterday, and so beauty, so makeup artists can still not go back, even with the next wave, so we're still, Stuck. We're still gonna do what <laughs> I do. So yeah, so first of all, um, First it was fine, the first couple of weeks it was okay, we got we get through this, switch the camera off and um, you know, keep myself bu busy with other creative projects. Um, but then it became a little bit tedious and I felt uh, paralyzed. That's sure. probably a good point. I felt like I cannot creatively express myself. I can't shoot people, I can't be with people, I can't do what I love and it just became really, really painful in a way. So I started while I'm in this I mean, this I started shooting my boyfriend, um, so I was like, right, okay, uh, I know you don't like having a picture taken, but you <laughs> are hell in this chair, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. And at this point, I was still thinking, yeah, come on, I'm gonna shoot him, and in a couple of weeks, this is gonna be over. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't. So I then started taking pictures of myself, and I think this was the first lot. I, I'm not a makeup artist. I just grabbed something that was in my house. I just grabbed some glitter and quite frankly dunked my face <laughs> I think you've proved you're a makeup artist though definitely <laughs> I, I, I don't really know <laughs> but yeah so this was the first thing and uh, I don't know if like people that I'm friends with they will remember I put this up and the response was amazing and amongst other comments people said that I would have this on my wall and I realized that it was um, unrecognizable enough for someone to have as a piece of art and yeah I it's, was confident. It wasn't like it was a, uh, you know, top yeah. of head to, or just a portrait of, of you, yeah. So, um, yeah, and it was um, anonymous enough, so I wouldn't be like ashamed to be in those. So that was the beginning. And then I started just looking around what I could find outside my house. So um, this was the next kind of lot that I shot. It was, I started bringing nature in because people know that I really love um, close-up details of plants, especially mm -hmm. stuff like this, like dandelions. I mean, it just, the detail you can see in something like that is just amazing. So I just love using stuff like that in there. <laughs> and just to be clear, you did all of this yourself. 
Yes. I did all of this myself. I so wore, no assistance, no oh, extra pair of hands, nothing. Oh yeah, I, was, I wanted to really stress this because obviously we could not work with other team members and people were told to isolate. And um, so this is what I had to do. I had to just be a one man team. And in order to take a beauty image, which always requires at least a model, photographer, makeup artist, I just had to become all three of them. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, the pictures that I have on the screen, I am lucky enough that my boyfriend's brother-in-law is a beekeeper. <laughs> so for those that are asking, this is not comped. I am really not bothered by creepy crawlies, apart from spiders. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I, I put these on my mouth pretty much. They are dead, I have to say that. And no bees were killed. Killed in the, in the making of these photos. Yep. No one, not, yep. not a single bee was killed. They just dropped dead after a while. Yep. And I was saying to my boyfriend's brother-in-law, next time you clear out the hive, please put them in a the Tupperware for me because I want to have a place. So yeah, I stepped it up a little bit from there. And then um, yeah, a little bit more creative there. Just, you know, I did loads of these and I started my, I had so much demand for prints of these after a while that I started a little um, online shop. Yeah. Um, and people all across the globe started buying these and putting these on their walls, which was a lovely little side effect um, that I hadn't expected at I the was, time. I was just looking for mine because I... Oh I, yeah, he's I, I had one of the first bees. I was the first customer, I think. I think you were the very first one, actually. First bees. There we go. How does that look? I am so <laughs> incredibly proud of that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I feel like at the time I didn't really realize that in a way for myself, I had shaped, I had changed my own future a little bit because of Corona happening, mm -hmm. I had to react to it. Um, and this is what this is what came out of it. So, yeah. And, and uh, Peter was just saying in the webinar room that these are very creative, which, uh, you know, is true. You think, how much can I do with just three square inches yeah. of my face or, or, or whatever? So and I love that. I love that challenge. I mean, people that know my work know that a face for me is a canvas and possibilities are endless. And especially close up, like I love using, I have done this before lockdown already. I love using an eyelid or lip as a canvas for creativity. So actually to be able to do that on myself is quite interesting because I am I'm just patient. I can sit there forever putting one petal after another, whereas with a model, I would be kind of conscious that I'm boring her or that yeah. I'm making this boring her. So um, I think I would have run out of patience for, for sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jan was just asking on uh, YouTube, are these all JPEG? But these are your final edits, aren't they? Yeah. We'll have a look at some raw files so um, a bit well, later. Please. I've made a few um, different sessions and folders, and so I'm going to show you a finished product in this little session. But I do have some capture sessions open yeah. where I can work and with the raw as well. We shall come back um, to that. Don't worry. And I will show you before and after, so you can see just how much I have done there. But just just to portray the journey for you. Yeah. Um, so what, this, what about the, uh, the the makeup drip? That must have been. Is that as okay. shot or was that comped in as as well? It's a bit of both. Yeah. To be honest. So. The long drip is real. The short drip is comped. Now that I've said that, you're probably going to notice that. So yeah. I put a lot of images, as, as you have to. And I just really liked how that small one was um, was coming off as well. So I didn't want to really waste him. And I was stuck between the two images. I was like, do I use this one? Do you use that one? And what you do is just put them into one picture. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Rob says, so you did that on yourself by yourself. <laughs> yes, yeah. just to, <laughs> yeah, cause when I saw the bees ones, I, I had the same feeling, Rob. Surely you didn't do that by yourself. But um, actually, we can have, maybe you can describe the setup where your arms and hands were or or how the setup looked. I think that would be would I mean, be good to see as well. They call me the human octopus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You've got four exactly. arms. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk you through it, but I am more than happy to just pull the laptop out in a second and because I am actually physically sitting in that very setup right now. So okay. I will explain it to you and then just show you. Okay, That's so I'm just, I'm just going to switch the screen to just your camera only, okay? So it's just you on screen right now. Me on screen? Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can turn your laptop around if you like to show the I'll walk the out here. So, yeah. I'm going to put my phone away. I can just do like one of, 
one of these for a second. So okay. I'm sitting on a little posing table. I don't know. I'm trying to see you. So to my right is a flag. Can you see that? Yep. Can. Yep. Perfect. And to my left is another flag. Okay. Black and white. Well. Good. I'm hoping that Tubi is listening. These are from B flat. Uh, these flat world. Mm -hmm. So I use these little guys a lot, especially you know people that read my blog posts for for EDU. They know that um, I love to not overcomplicate shots with too many lights. You will see my setup in a second. Um, what I do is I have taught myself to manipulate the shadows I am cre creating with as little lights as possible, and using um, flags for that is is just you know a priceless tool for me. So instead of always using another fill light, for example, I will just bounce my key light off one of those um, white reflectors. Got it. Uh, um, without getting too technical. I'm going to just literally walk around and show you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Back and tea. She's coming yeah. back. Don't worry. You're <laughs> going to have to tell me if everything's in the picture. Because okay. I can't really see that right now. Oh, yeah. We see it. That's good. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I'm trying to talk you through that. You see that um, Octobox on the right, which yep. is my right now. Um, so that's my key light. And then there's a little zoom reflector there, which I sometimes, if I shoot for client now, I use that as a fill because they don't want creative shadows. Um, but if I do my own creative work, I usually just use that one for photo. You see that little star uh, shaped, uh, and people are going to ask what that is. Can you see it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I am not using that for the... Um, for the lip macros, but I have just put that in there today just to be lit for the webinar. Got it. <laughs> so get confused by that. Um, and then obviously you see there, there's my tripod set up. Um, my tripod, there we go, has my own name. There we go. <laughs> it's by three-legged world, super easy to handle. My camera's on there. Um, and yeah, I just sit in front of a backdrop. Fantastic. Right, I'm going to put you guys back and then I will talk you through how I actually trigger Yes. Oh, I've just, uh, we've got your capture one up on screen again and you're flat so you can come around to the front. There she, she's back. <laughs> so uh, a couple of questions um, just related to that section. Peter says, Tina, even if you stop right now, you've con convinced me that you're amazing. So there we go. Let's just end the webinar. I will absolutely take that. <laughs> uh, Simon was asking and Will uh, as well, which camera lens setup did you use for these shots so i am using and i have before <laughs> my mm. favorite lens is a 100 mil macro um which has been hands down my favorite for shooting models because it's perfect to switch between you know like sort of a portrait crop and macro images and i'm very um hyperactive on shoot day so i like to jump in and take pictures of details so macro lens is perfect for that now, um, it comes with challenges when you do self uh, Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because the depth of field, I imagine, is relatively slim. Um, the amount of times that the camera picks my nose up instead of my mouth and just kind of like guessing where in the picture I have to be. So I shoot, um, I don't shoot in live view, so you can imagine that um, I do see the images come up on my phone immediately, which we're going to talk through in a second. Um, so I trigger it from my phone. So I, the advantage of that is that I'm holding it right next to the lens. So in the corner of my eye, I can see the result and then I can react to it within millimeters, okay. um, which is super important. Every small move, if I just put my chin down very slightly or a little bit up, will make the difference, for example, between seeing your teeth in that picture. So your movement is very very subtle um that's something i had to learn in the beginning i didn't really keep an eye on the results i would just be like looking down at the phone like <laughs> with the whole shot up so yeah it's right next to my lens um yeah. and yeah i'll trigger it from the phone and um, i think today for the purpose of this you are going to demo yeah that. i'm just going to give you a little demo of capture pilot um purely because i can link it up to the broadcast system here and actually share my iPad screen and my screen at the same time. So let's just try and do that. So hopefully we should see, uh, now we're looking at my screen and some of Thank Tina's you. other pictures, uh, as you can oh, see. I'll pick yeah. up on, uh, yeah. on my Facebook, I can see the questions on 
your guys' Facebook, David. Okay, so have a look at those while yeah. I have a little chat about Facebook. So what you guys are looking at now, um, this is my iPad just in the bottom right-hand corner. I'm just going to grab it so you don't see I'm cheating. There's my iPad. Oh, you can't actually see me on screen as well. There's not quite enough uh, inputs to show everything, but this is my uh, iPad. I'm just going to jiggle it up and down um, uh, like so. So I'm on an iPad. Tina was on her phone, which made things even more complicated. So essentially what happens is, uh, so over here you can see we've got the Capture Pilot tool, uh, and that is in the uh, Capture Tool tab. And essentially what Capture Pilot is, I'm just going to bring up um, myself on screen a second. There's my iPad, by the way, so you can see it matched. Essentially what Capture Pilot is, is really just another link to your current Capture One catalog or session. So as long as the iPhone or iPad is on the same network as your uh, host computer, then they will simply just see each other and, and pick up. Uh, so let's just bring up the iPad on screen. So essentially I'm just seeing you know what Tina would see. So if she just shot this one, for example, she'd be able to see this, she'd be able to pinch to zoom in, to check to see if she got focus or not. If one was really super awesome, then she could throw in a star rating and that would be synced back to Capture One. So if I find the one that's uh, on screen at the moment, uh, this one, so if we say make that five stars, uh, like so, then you can see down at the bottom on Capture One down here, it's got five stars. And if I change this to two stars, or let's put in a color tag, like so, then, sorry, I have it to auto advance. You can see it sync the color tag back to my iPod, uh, iPad. Um, now the cool thing is, of course, I'm just gonna turn on my camera, which is connected. Um, it's a uh, older X-T2, so it's dying slightly. And also there's a camera control module. So if I tap on the little camera icon, then you've got access to um, uh, your camera controls as well. So that big button, Tina can trigger the camera. Um, and also in Capture One, she could have live view running to kind of assist with um, focusing and everything uh, as well. So in the live view display, you'd be able to see, um, let's just bring me back a second. In live view on Capture One, you'd be able to see obviously your composition and the focus point and so on. And then the iPad, of course, that would give you the ability to track progress of the shots and so on. So yes, Peter, um, uh, Capture Pilot does basically give you another screen. So it's handy for this kind of obscure application, which uh, is not common use, but it also means if you're a solitary photographer working on set, then you can use Capture Pilot to trigger the camera whilst you're in the set or if your camera's in an awkward place uh, and so on. Now in terms of, um, David was asking, is it available for Android phones? It's only on iOS devices, but you can use any web enabled device as well. So on uh, the Capture Pilot tool on my screen, if you look at web, then there's just a simple IP address which will give you a basic Capture Pilot interface as well. So if you're on Android and you still want to see the shots as they come in, then you can do so. But you don't get camera control uh, on the web version. Um, so I think, so let's bring you back, Tina, so I'm not monopolizing um, the entire <laughs> webinar. So I think, was that a relatively accurate description of, yeah, yeah of what you did? Good. Um, uh, now you can't autofocus on um, the iPad and sorry, on Capture Pilot, were, were you kind of setting a macro point and then just moving yourself? Yeah, I have to yeah. move myself within, you know, just like tiny little millimeters until it picks up in the right spot. So yeah. that took a lot of practice and I can't stress that enough. Um, focus uh, mask on Capture One is a lifesaver there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, are you still on my screen? I'm just gonna, Switch that on and off to. Oh no, it's not going to do it in that one. Here. Yeah, we can see your screen. That's cool. Yeah. Two seconds. I'm going to go into my other little session and switch it on there. Um, so what focus? What the focus mouse does is it shows you pretty much, as the name suggests, exactly where you are focusing. Yeah. Um, so um, with something that where I had to just guess back and forth: is it getting my nose? Is it getting flowers? Is it getting my lips? Um, Having that switched on is a lifesaver in general, and especially in something like self-portraits. Yeah. Um, oh, just um, 
because I think people might have missed, missed that. Um, just come out the crop a second so we can see. Oh no, that's perfect because we can see your nose and your lips. What, what Tina turned on was uh, the focus mask, which um, basically is almost like focus peaking, I guess you could say, um, on video, which kind of shows you the area that's in the plane of focus. Yeah. So it's great for self-portrait, <laughs> um, but of course it's also very handy if you're shooting people products and you don't want to zoom in, you can instantly tell where your yeah. plane of uh, focus is. Yeah. I, was, I was just going to say that in, yeah. if, if any of you guys are looking to try something like this, um, learn about focal plane. Yeah. Mm. Having, you know, um, the, the reason why my nose and my lips and parts of flowers is in focus all at the same time here is because of they are in the same focal plane there. So yeah. if I was tilting my head back on even a tiny little bit, um, I might lose the lips and the fingers will be in focus, that sort of thing. So for you to be dead on towards your lens is really important, depending on if that's the sort of look you're going for. If um, in, for example, macro images that you do on a model, if you are shooting, you know, that sort of angle up the face and you want the focus to be only on the eyes, not on the lips, for example, then having the head tilted back so the focal plane of the mouth and the lips is different would be something you would want to do, for example. But for me, it was very important that I am dead on. Yeah. And I guess even what, what aperture, are you shoot, aperture are you shooting at, I, I guess? Uh, so this one, I'm anywhere, I can do this wide open and not. Like, so this one, for example, was 7.1. Okay, um, and you still, even at f16, you still don't have much to play with, I guess, either. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do I do go double figures on that when it comes to like client work, but um, this was meant to be more like creative play, so it's a little bit wider open on these ones. Um, on later images, you'll notice that I wasn't quite so much anymore. Um, there was more like 13 plus. Right. Um, what else was I going to tell you? So, do you want me to show you some things that we can do in Capture One then? Yes, um, <laughs> I just want to check uh, questions wise. Oh, Akshay was asking if there's any delay on Capture Pilot. It's pretty instant. So, yeah. depending on your network speed, like if I try it at home, as soon as I hit that capture button, it's, it's like I'm pressing it on the camera. So, yeah. it's not like you hit the capture button and go, freeze. It's uh, it's it's pretty instant, um, and even uh, just when you're scrolling through. Hang on, let's just. I'm just going to bring up Capture Pilot. Uh, where's the my screen? So just when I'm scrolling through, I'm just scrolling through my iPads. Now you can see it's pretty speedy, and when I go back through, and if I double tap to zoom in, and I've picked the one that's out of focus, Tina. <laughs> then uh, you can tell straight yeah, away if it's in focus or not. Yeah, like so. So it's it's pretty snappy. Um, and just to point out, my iPad's on Wi-Fi, my laptop's on uh, wired connection. So really, as long as they're kind of heading back to the same uh, router, then it works fine. Um, what I do know that some people elect to do working in a studio, like if you're shooting in a studio which has 12 studios and 100 people on the same network, um, then you might run into an issue. So you, uh, another good little option is just to carry your own kind of a uh, hotspot around with you like a travel router and that works really nicely as as well so um okay yeah let's look at something in capture one i'm just trying to find a picture where there's quite a bit of yeah uh, and then we're going to look at the final in photoshop as well because absolutely obviously with beauty retouching capture one is not uh, a beauty retouching tool we have great healing clone tools and so on but um for for uh, beauty retouching then of course there's always something you'll probably end up doing in Photoshop but then it's easy to go back and forth between Capture One and Photoshop as well. Yeah. Okay over to you. I always like to say I don't it's not Photoshop or Capture One they go hand in hand they are integrated into each other mm -hmm. there's things that I will do in Capture One all the raw processing and then there's things that I will do in Photoshop it's not like <laughs> it's one or the other. Yeah. So um the main things that I will do, so obviously, for example, if I'm shooting for a client, so I'm trying to talk more general here, not just mm -hmm. lockdown, because obviously, hopefully, stuff is going to go back to normal. Um, so I will, I will always take a test shot or a couple, and then I will make some small adjustments that then get um, automatically applied to all the, uh, all the pictures that I take after that. 
Um, so that would be stuff like, you know, I could very slightly already tweak some highlights and shadows there. Mm -hmm. um, you can play with exposure, but at this point, you might as well just get, get the exposure right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and your lights. So um, that stuff is all minimal. And the reason why I'm doing it in front of the client is because I just want my picture to look as perfect as possible. Um, so yeah, so the main tools for me for as a beauty photographer would be the skin tool and also the luma mask in case you're hearing some rattling behind me that is my cat <laughs> <laughs> i wonder what that thought is there something <laughs> something going on here so no, if you want cat. To see her, I, will, yeah. I will bring her in later <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so the skin tool and again i'm going to explain most humans all humans um have a discrepancy in terms of skin um the, between skin tones, between their face, their hands, their neck, their ears. That's perfectly normal. We all have that. Um, and even having a makeup artist on set, it's just impossible to get that all into the same sort of tone. Right. So um, there's no shame to that. <laughs> and I will always try and get my um, skin as unified in Capture One as I can before I even pull it into Photoshop. So um, I will show you that. Obviously, cool. A picture like this there isn't much skin there um, but I'll try and I'll, I'll try and incorporate the lips into that just so you can uh, see the uh, the difference properly so I'm going to add um, a new layer just so I can show you the before and after okay and I will just um, switch this mask off for the purpose of this so there down here you've got the color editor tool which is divided into basic, advanced, and skin tone. So advanced and skin tone are the ones that I use the most. Advanced is something I would use for changing the color of something, which rarely ever happens. But for example, I could do I could make the greens of those le uh, leaves a little bit juicier, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Now, skin tone is where it gets super interesting. Um, so what you do is you take this little eyedropper tool and just pick somewhere um, where there's a there's a skin tone that's pleasant mm -hmm. let's say that um and so you see down there it has sampled that there so now um you see down here you can pull you can basically now adjust the uniformity of the skin tone in regards to the hue saturation and light so let me just pull this further a little bit and i'm going to go extreme so you can see the difference and you can see it massively mm -hmm. The picture, because I have added, a f um, I have put a fill layer, it was completely filled, so everything in this image will now be considered as skin um, in the range of the skin tone I told it. So the lips was, as you can see, within this sort of like pinky tone. So um, it's getting taken into consideration here. Um, so let me just show you the before and after of that. So even just pulling that slider, you can see what difference that has made. Now, if obviously you don't want the whole image to be considered here, you can use a brush tool, you can, you know, tell um, Capture One where your mask is supposed to be. Um, I'm going to demonstrate that to you. If I would say, by the way, I'm not on a Wacom tablet, I'm just doing this with my fingers right now. So, this is gonna <laughs> so it's going to be uh, uh, kludgy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but say, for example, I'm going to go, right, okay, yeah, it's take the skin, but the lips, I didn't really want to be in there. Oh, that's actually quite yeah, quite neat, isn't it? Yeah, pretty good for a trackpad. Yeah. For a trackpad. Uh -huh. So, yeah, so basically it has now only unified the, the skin and not the, uh, the lips as well. So you can do that in terms of saturation, you can do that in terms of lightness. This is this, you can see the effect of that really nicely too. So with that tool, I have already brought some sort of uniformity to the skin tones as much as I can before I even start editing. And I think it's for anyone that works with skin, yeah. this tool is pretty, pretty priceless. And, and anyone can learn how to do that. Whereas trying to do that similar <coughs> correction in um, cap, uh, in a Photoshop would be require a bit more in-depth knowledge, I would say. Absolutely. Yeah. Let me show you something else, shall I? So, hmm. Luma masks. Yes. I think, I'm really sorry if you have watched a previous webinar, I keep banging on about uh, Luma masks. <laughs> I think it's just, it just blows it's, uh, it's always okay to reiterate the, uh, uh, the oh. good points. And just, uh, sorry, interrupt a second. Those of you that have asked questions in the webinar room, 
I don't worry I shall make sure I fire those at Tina as well in our in the next suitable spot so I just wanted to say I'm not ignoring anybody I mean now is a good spot and while we are at it okay let's do it um let's see um Terry I, I, sorry so before you go you you're too you're too quick <laughs> I would just have to say to, to one of our watchers, and it's Jake Hoy, who's a very, um, yes. you know, loved member <laughs> of our community. <laughs> and it's his birthday today, so I just want to give a special shout out before we it's get into it. It's his birthday. Oh. Yes. Happy birthday, Jake. I have nothing yeah. better to do than watch us do this on his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Happy birthday. That's Jake Hoy, isn't it? Jay Coy. He is watching, I believe. There we go. Free plug to his Instagram. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, questions. Uh, I'm just going to run through them uh, five or six, top to bottom. Uh, what did Tina use, Simon was asking, to create the glossy red lip drips? The drip, okay. So, mm. complete honesty, because I'm not a makeup artist, I don't have the proper tool. So, I'm, I'm pretty sure that... Um, Someone like, you know, Louise that I work with a lot, she's got mm -hmm. um, stuff that makes this drip, like professional, whatever, like liquid to, to do this. I'm just using household, anything that I can find. So this could be, um, I have done drips before that was pigment mixed with water. Okay. Um, it's not very gloopy. Uh, so you have to be super, super quick capturing that. Um, then you start mixing in anything from like glycerine to lip gloss and I just make a little cocktail really <laughs> um, hope you're not allergic to it yeah i'm not lucky yeah. <laughs> okay with that. Uh, <laughs> she magic did says kish um so yeah like it's kind of like it's not pretty it's not professional i just anything i can find oh yeah aloe vera gel is one of them as well just to thicken stuff up because okay. yep. i just <laughs> just i'm sitting next to it so um so yeah it's kind of like depending on what i use because in that case i use sort of like a liquid lipstick so i had to liquefy that a little bit with water but it, as i said if you use pigment the consistency is completely different so start playing with that but there's really nice gloopy um glosses as well and i've discovered by accident the other day i had um, a gloss on while i was shooting and that stuff just drips by itself you don't even need to do anything so there's glosses i don't know what company that was that was used for that oh it was shiseido uh, for the makeup artists amongst amongst you, that clear gloss is drippy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that would be a little point on the right direction there. Cool. Um, Terry was asking, I'll take this one, do you need to pair your iPad to Capture One? Uh, not really. So if I just show you Capture One, so you have the Capture Pilot app. All you need to do is click the button that says Start Server down here and then open Capture One on your iPad. And that's it. Simple as that. So it's, uh, it's very straightforward. Um, okay, next question for you, Tina. Uh, I'm always scared when you say that. I'm always scared I can't answer it. <laughs> <laughs> well, just because I can show it in my, uh, in my screen. I'm sure you could have answered it. Um, Terry, that was Terry. So thanks for the question. Tracy was asking, the light on the left, does it have a grid or is it an unmodified light? I think she meant the, um, the spotlight, not the Octobox. Uh, not the Octobox. The Octobox, Octobox only has a diffuser on and the um, zoom reflector has nothing on. That's just bare as it just comes. I do, have, okay. I do have grids for these, but um, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't really. Because um, grids I mainly use to control the spill of light mostly onto the backdrop. And that's not an issue in this kind of photography because I'm not really too bothered if that spills behind me or, you know, because. Yeah, tiny, tiny little workspace. So Got it. Got I didn't it. get the grids out for that. Um, a couple of people were asking, very timely question, uh, if you can set up Capture Pilot in a different country. So you could so you could shoot in your studio and I could watch the shoot. Um, uh, yes, uh, you kind of can. Uh, there's a really super nerdy workaround um which is incredibly difficult to explain in a webinar um, but what i will do a canadian photographer i know called uh, nolan dubo wrote a blog post about it um, i'll have to see if his blog is still up but you use a little third party app called uh, ngrok um, which allows you essentially to put capture pilot anywhere in the world 
So it, it can work, it just requires a bit of fiddling and probably a bit of nerdy, nerdy know-how. Um, but if I can find that blog post, I'll just put it in the comments of, uh, uh, of the YouTube video when it goes up. So, but that would be pretty handy in this uh, day and age as well. Um, camera in use, Tina, they saw that it was CR2. Uh, yeah. Is it a 5D SR or which body is it? Uh, uh, 5D Mark IV. 5D Mark IV, there you go. Funny so. enough, I had to check that then, even though I've had this camera for years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all day. Yeah, um, it's, it's, uh, it's all about the lens really in this case, that, that, that 100 mils a pretty solid performer, I would say. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, I have had a question how I am connecting between my trigger and the uh, computer. So I, for my phone, I just Wi-Fi it up. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just as long as um, Capture One and Capture Pilot are on the same network, or your host computer is on the same network. As I said, my laptop's hooked up hardwired to the network. Capture Pilot is just on Wi-Fi, but it's on the same network, so they will just find each other essentially if there's any firewalls blocking or anything like that there's actually a way to manually set up the connection uh, as well but 99% of the time uh, it's just an automatic process so it's it's very simple to be honest so. it has to be simple I'm really bad with stuff like that if there's whatever you just said with firewall I would have given up at that point. yeah exactly I'm done <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah good I oh, think I think that was pretty much the question. Uh, my colleagues on social media have answered a couple as well. So that's fantastic. Um, Andrea says he's super late. Don't worry, Andrea. It's been recorded, so <laughs> it's all good. We to show you some more things. Yes, definitely. Oh, the cat made a starring appearance. Yes, I had yeah. a lot of questions. What is comms and what's not comms? Yes. So, um, as you can see, yeah, it's kind of like a bit of everything with something like that. Those who know me, I just got a little kitten, <laughs> and um, obviously I wanted to use her because she's super, super cute. So, and I also have never seen that <laughs> in yeah. my photography. So it's a case of, as people know, it's really hard to shoot pets. So yes. where my lips were nice, the paw wasn't nice. So <laughs> it's not entirely comes it wasn't like that i just shot the paw and then comes it onto my lips i did shoot the paw on the lips but then i found you know because yeah, because you need the right uh, yeah it's crazy we're talking about cat paw lighting but you need the you need the right angle and the yeah. right light and shadow fall off so it doesn't just look like it's stuck on the top and yeah not so correct I've, i thought i'd mention that and then also before i show you my um luma mask that i'm obsessed with I will, where did I put it? Hmm. Sorry, I've got so many little things open right now. <laughs> that is Photoshop. And David made me switch hiding on, so <laughs> even harder to find. So yeah, I just wanted to make the bridge now between me doing this for fun and actually yep. um, starting to do this for clients which yes. happened a couple of weeks ago. So this picture marks the very first picture that I took for a brand. Um, again, it's fairly improvised. These petals were just in, I just had a bouquet of flowers. So I started playing with that. Um, so this uh, sh shot was taken for the launch of the new Fenty lipsticks that happened this week. Um, so the makeup artist amongst you know that is a fairly big brand. So Was that Fenty, yeah? Yeah, Fenty, which That's is Rihanna's brand. Rihanna's brand, brand yeah. That is it. So now, all of a sudden, um, brands clock onto the fact that, you know, um, we can actually produce content still without having to have teams, which we are not allowed to. Mm -hmm. um, so Especially in the USA. Yeah. That is it. So mm -hmm. I got sent a product from brands from the US, from the UK, all over um, to actually, you know, work with um, up to the point when um, this week I got my first campaign full on for a new makeup brand in the U US where my lips and makeup skills and, and, <laughs> and all so, that. So, so and just to be clear, because I'm sure the question's going to come up and this was a direct result of your self project. Yeah, that yeah, you much. then came to be able to do this commercially. Yeah, and I didn't yeah. again, did not think that in the beginning because I didn't rate myself as 
I make about this, but obviously any discrepancies there I can make up for with a bit of retouch. Yes. Um, so actually I realized that my lips were perfectly enough to produce something like <laughs> um, So yeah, so like this, this is an example for, for one of the brands that I've worked with this week, last week. Um, so yeah, I made that bridge from, oh, this is fun, that will keep me sane, to I can actually generate some income. Come, yeah, which is even better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, so now again, which I always say, my style is very creative. I like to go nuts, like something like that that's up on the screen right now, or I don't know, like this, that. Um, it's probably not necessarily what makeup brands need to see. So when if you're toying with this idea, make sure that you put something clean in as well. Oh, yeah, might as well show this one as well. This is this was also Fenty one, just kind of like along the lines of if you can't decide which shade to use, so always bear in mind that you are serving the needs of the brand as well if you do yeah. something like that. Yeah. Sure. Did you yeah. look at what the brand was producing before? Yeah. So so it had some kind of Yeah. Consistency. So how it works, how it works um, is I mean I would always have done that even if when I wasn't in the model yeah. for I communicate with the brand, I see what their style is, um, and then I ask the question, is there ideas that you guys have in mind? And um, um, more often than not, they tell me that I can just do what I do because they have seen my work and would like sure. me to go along those lines. And so Fenty, for example, that brand I would call is very sexy, sassy. Um, Rihanna-like. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. so, you know, like, I mean, these lipsticks are called slip shine. Uh, for me mm -hmm. to try and portray how juicy they are. Uh, <laughs> yes. I mean, I've, I think I've, I've got it <laughs> with yeah. that picture. Um, and yeah, again, I, I, I have taken pictures where the product was in, so the more clean ones uh, where you can see the, the gloss and um, and then I've taken some where I went wild so the, the client can just take their pick in the end. Actually, going oh. back to the gloss, um, we had a question that was from Mafundo said how did you shoot do the shot with a broken glass it looks it's insanely what? cool yeah was any licks, lips damaged uh, they, in the making of this photo they weren't <laughs> I'm, I'm sad I, I had I kept the shot I don't know where I have it right now um, I <laughs> this was almost more of an accident so this question is interesting I had a piece of glass that I wanted to shoot against so I wanted to um, oh, like do squish sort of yeah. Squish against it and like have messy sort of lipstick on that glass. So I tested it, <laughs> yeah. put the glass on the floor, went around to change the height of the light or whatnot, something like that. Right. And in that process, accidentally stepped on the glass panel. So um, now broken glass all over the floor. I then went, oh hey, cool, yeah, let's let's do this. So this <laughs> was kind of it came out of an accident. Um, it is legit squished against my lips like that i just had to be super super careful i did not cut myself once i did not cut myself in the in the finger yeah. um it was just i had to be really really careful with it yeah um, and and also yeah. out, out of interest for for me so was just tagging fenty and the other brands in instagram enough or did you yeah. go chasing them and and i have um so yeah tagging is one of them and then i because of having worked as a beauty photographer for 11 years now, I have been in touch with brands already, sure. plenty. Um, so then for them to get in touch about it or for me to put the idea out there to them was quite organic, I would say. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That's it's always comforting to hear that it, uh, I mean, obviously the work speaks for itself and the quality, but, but the fact that there was this positive end benefit is fantastic, yeah. really. I think um, this is another really good opportunity. Now, during lockdown, um, the way we communicate with clients and possible clients and all that sort of um, through our social media, I can't yeah. stress that enough. And I always have that you, the marketing tool that Instagram is and the voice it gives you and the platform to reach potential clients is just not to be underestimated. And I mean, I've been saying that for years now and there is still people out there that go, yeah, but like, don't pay your bills, and I'm still the person that goes, just look at what I just said. Like, I tag brands in this, which then go, let me give you some money to do this for us. So, yeah. um, I don't think a website alone would have done that. You don't have a big enough voice on your website alone. So, yeah. 
and there's there's always a risk of course you get nothing out of it but then yeah sometimes it comes good um now that was a massive long digression from you were going to show us uh lum you wanted to show luminosity masking didn't you i think you. Yeah. again <laughs> yeah. let me switch this over while we so let me have a look at worst floor there you go. let me know what doing. apologies it's all right too many windows <laughs> there we go. Um, so I was going to show you the magic of the Luma masks. Yes. Let me go into this image. So what I showed you earlier with the skin tool, obviously you saw that I drew um, a mask in physically. Um, so this now represents a, a physical shape, right? Right. So if I if I then went to copy and paste this mask onto the next image it wouldn't work because the, my lips are in a completely different position, models or yourself, you move. So um, a physical mask doesn't so much make sense to copy and paste. So <laughs> can you tell how much of a fangirl of a Luma mask I am? <laughs> so let me just add another filled layer to this. And this time I will actually display this mask so you can see what I'm doing. This might be a little bit annoying, but <laughs> bear with me. So now I have put a layer mask on there and you see mm -hmm. up here, um, I click Luma range. Let me just pull that there so I can see it. There you go. So now you can tell this mask um, where you want it to sit in terms of highlights and shadows. And I think that's pretty cool. And you can see there, you can change the fall off of it. So now I am defining, for example, in this image, what areas of shadow I would like to be affected by this mask. Mm -hmm. It's super handy. Yeah. It's, I love it. <laughs> you want to chime in, I make myself feel <laughs> like a fangirl right now. <laughs> um, so, right, okay, so now you can see I have done that and I'm gonna. Well, I could use this, for example, to just, you know, like crank those shadows up. What's cool as well, I really like that when I'm doing adjustments, that it switches the mask off in that moment so you can actually see what I'm doing. Yeah. So, um, for the purpose of this, now, um, if this was, again, if this was a physical shape, it absolutely would not work on this image because <laughs> it's completely yeah. different. So let me copy this um, and paste it onto the other images almost instantly. Obviously, it has taken the crop as well now, so let me just move that a little bit. But what you see is that it has taken the parameters of, you know, the, the criteria I gave yep. it. So it has given it that it's it's picking the shadows in the same way that it has on the first image, as you can see. And that's where Luma Mask is magic to me because it isn't a physical figure. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a range, I'd say. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Now that makes uh, this mask copy and pasteable a lot easier for me because I'm not physically drawing it in from one picture to the next. So um, yeah, mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> and there's tons of tutorials on masking you can find on our learning hub. So uh, Kathy, who said, oh my God, this is great. Uh, if you want to be inspired more, um, let's just put a link in um, just for everyone to see. Learn.capture1.com um, just has such a, an array of different tutorials. Uh, there's other webinars there, probably a couple from Tina as well, I, I would think, and short tutorials and longer ones and, and so on. So if you want to get into detail in anything that we've discussed today, everything is there. And also our support pages as well. I'm just checking our time. We've got, in theory, 10 minutes left. So I just want to make sure uh, how we're doing for Q&A. Um, Kathy was asking, how do you enhance the texture in the lips? Sharpening and contrast or? something um, else and we can show it feel free to always uh, show the final work up in photoshop as well as we're nearing the end as well so i haven't actually enhanced that at all but um let me show you how i actually did want to cover that so that's a good reminder mm -hmm. um i just wanted to show you how much i would do um before it's done <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm just going to hide our faces because uh, we're covering up um 
the layers panel, which is kind of important <laughs> on this part. Yeah. I just had a question that is very topical for what I am about to say. So Erica was saying, do you do other skin retouch, like frequency right. separation on Capture One or on Photoshop? So very good timing, Absolutely. Erica. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> so I, do, I don't actually do frequency separation. Um, I do dodge and burn. I get everything done with that, it's a lot less destructive. Mm -hmm. um, so that I would do in Photoshop. Um, yeah, so let me just show you. I'm not going to go through the steps because this sure. is not Photoshop seminar. <laughs> but um, I've left this um, top one, it's called Infinite Color. So people often say to me, how do you tone your images? And I've shown you a big part of that because I do that in Capture One. So the skin toning is mostly done there. Mm -hmm. But um, the Infinite Color um, panel is something that I use to be, it's a creative tool. So sometimes we stare at an image and we don't know just what way to go in terms what of- What direction what. to go in, yeah. Exactly. So I've got this, you, you will barely see it. It's a tiny, tiny subtle change. I've only got it on 25%. I'm gonna crank it up to 100 so you see the difference there. And what it does is it, um, it's basically like a slot machine of creativity, if I might say that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you press this create button and it just gives you suggestions and it's, you can sit on that for hours. Um, and once you get to one, you're like, oh yeah, I do like that. This is what I usually do. I would go, oh yeah, that's that's quite cool. Maybe a little bit too much, so we turn that down a little bit. And that will always be my very last step in, cool. uh, in Photoshop. Very However, nice. switch it off. So um, I think that last that might be a bit of alien skin there, just to bring that out a little bit. But in terms of what I have done, I'm very vain. Vain. I have um, plumped my lips up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just straighten some flower. My nail um, is tidy. The skin's tidy. We all have peach fuzz on our top lip. Please don't judge me for that. I don't think <laughs> after. Well, it is a hundred mil macro. We have, to, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Please don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna be shocked what you find there. Yeah. Um, then up there you can see that um, I have made the pores less visible. That sort of stuff. Basically, what I use skin retouch for is that I sort of get rid of things that don't add anything to where I want the viewer's focus to be. Um, so yeah, my pores and my little peach fuzz lady mustache <laughs> don't really add to that, so um, they have to go. Yeah. And um, so you can see that's as much as I would do there, and you see that especially on the inside 